Nellie is approaching a picturesque field. She's carrying a package. If she doesn't manage to open it before reaching the field, she won't survive. Can you guess what's in the package? Nellie is skydiving. There's a parachute in her package. After a safe landing, Nellie decides to take a walk in a sunflower field. Can you help her spot three odd things about this area? This straw man is winking. This sunflower has teeth. And there are two suns in the sky. Nellie walks too far and gets lost in the woods. She wanders around for a while and meets four guys sitting on one big tree. Can you help her rank them in order of foolishness? The fourth person is cutting the branch where he sits, so he's the silliest. The first person is sitting on the branch that will soon be cut by the second guy. So the first person is the second most foolish. The second person doesn't see that he's about to fall too, so he's the third. And finally, the third guy. He's a bad person, but definitely not a stupid one. Nellie moves on and finds a highway. Three people offer to give her a ride to the nearest town. Can you help Nellie choose the safest driver? Take a look at this guy's car. Its tires are flat, and there's a puddle of engine oil spilled out of the car. Probably not the safest choice. Oh. This beautiful lady and her car are both translucent because they're ghosts. As for this gloomy trucker, he looks pretty reliable. Yeah. Nellie enters the local coffee shop and meets two ladies. Both ladies tell her that they are daughters of a famous billionaire. Can you guess who's lying? The lady on the right is a liar. The logo on her t-shirt is fake. Therefore, she's not rich. Nellie doesn't have any money to buy food. The coffee shop manager feels sorry for her and offers Nellie a free lunch. But first, she has to solve his tricky riddle. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. People have stepped on me, but not many. I never stay full for long. I have a dark side. What am I? Can you help Nellie win her free food? The correct answer is the moon. Nellie is eating and looking through the pictures hanging on the wall. Suddenly, she sees something weird. Can you spot any odd details too? This person appears in both pictures, looking young and pretty. But the time distance between these two photos is 100 years. Nellie enters a flower shop and sees the owner putting bouquets in big vases. If he puts one bouquet per vase, he will end up with one extra bouquet. And if he puts two bouquets per vase, he will end up with one extra vase. How many vases and bouquets does he have? He has three vases and four bouquets. The flower shop owner offers Nellie a job. He has just received a delivery. There are three boxes labeled red roses, white roses, and red and white roses. Each box is labeled incorrectly. Mm. Nellie has just one chance to pick up a flower from any box and then label the boxes correctly. Ah. Can you help her accomplish this task? Nellie should take a flower from the box labeled as red and white roses. Since they're labeled incorrectly, this box should contain either red roses only or white roses only. Let's suppose that Nellie finds the red roses. Now she can label this box correctly. We know that the white box cannot have white roses. Therefore, now Nellie can label the remaining two boxes correctly. After earning some cash, Nellie decides to book a room in the local hotel to get some rest. The manager offers her to choose from three empty rooms. Can you help Nellie pick the best option? The 
There are cracks in the window glass in the first room. Very unsafe. Hmm. And there's a zombie hiding under the bed in the third room. So, Nellie should choose the second one. Nellie locks herself in the room. She opens the window and stands nearby, breathing fresh air. Suddenly, she throws something out of the window. Nellie passes out very soon after doing that. That's a mystery because she's perfectly healthy and nobody did anything to her because the door is locked. Can you find any logical explanation for what happened here? Nellie decided to throw a boomerang out of the window. The boomerang went to the maximum distance and returned back straight to her head. After a while, Nellie wakes up with a headache. She goes to the local shop to buy some aspirin. She spots three odd things about this place. Can you see them too? There's corn on the shelf along with napkins and toilet paper. The announcement offers an 800% discount. That's too good to be true. And finally, the shopkeeper is wearing two pairs of glasses. Suddenly, the shopkeeper begins to yell, Someone stole my money! Uh -oh. And he locks the customers inside the shop and calls the police. They arrive and question four suspects. Maya says, I came here to buy water for my 12 o'clock yoga class. I'm 20 minutes late because of you. Bob says, What's the point of stealing cash? Everyone knows that people use cards nowadays. Hmm. Lily says, This shopkeeper is a bad person. He deserved that. And Nellie replies, Sorry, I was focusing on my own purchase. I didn't see anything suspicious. After hearing that the officers had arrested one person, can you guess who? Maya, take a look at the clock on the wall. It's only 10 a.m. She's not late. Therefore, she's lying. Nellie is walking down the street. She sees a cozy garage sale organized by Miss Green. The fixed price for any item is only $1. Amy buys an old dress. Phil takes this beautiful antique vase. And Vivienne purchases a shabby vintage suitcase. Nellie comes over to Miss Green and says, Oh. Madam, you've just sold an expensive thing for a song. What? What does she mean? Can you guess? Vivian lifts this suitcase quite easily, so it's probably empty. And besides, it has holes in the bottom. Therefore, it can't be precious. This vase isn't antique. It has a sticker from a dollar store. Although this dress is dirty and torn, it has a large, expensive brooch pinned to it. So many gemstones can't cost just one dollar. Nellie asks Miss Green if she can use her bathroom. Miss Green says, Sure, it's at the end of the corridor. Nellie is walking down the corridor and confuses the doors. Nellie ends up in this messy kitchen. Huh? The door won't open. Can you help Nellie find a key? It's in the teapot. And Miss Green enters the kitchen and tells Nellie, I'm a witch, young lady, and I'm going to give you a gift if you manage to solve my riddle. Oh, yes. Nellie agrees. Here's the task. It starts with tea, it ends with tea, and it's full of tea. What is it? Can you solve this mystery? The correct answer is a teapot, again. Miss Green brings Nellie to her dusty basement and says, One of these three doors leads to a magical world, and the other two are fake. You have only one attempt to choose the correct door. Good luck! Oh, yeah! Can you help Nellie out? She should choose the third door. Take a look at the floor. Dusty footprints lead to the third door only, which means that doors one and two are fake. Nellie opens the third door and enters an enchanted forest. There are four ways to cross it, but all four passages are pretty dangerous. A hungry dragon is waiting for her on the first route. A massive fire is burning all over the second path. And the third path is basically a windowless tunnel. 
and the fourth passage is full of scorpions and snakes. Can you help Nelly choose the right path? She should pick the third way. The tunnel doesn't have windows, but who said it doesn't have an exit? Nelly walks the tunnel and finds herself in a beautiful castle. The guard says, This castle is yours if you manage to crack my riddle. I can fill a room, but I take up no space. What am I? Can you help Nelly win the castle? The correct answer is light. Nancy and Mike were going to the Carnival of Riddles, which was scheduled to be in their town during the weekend. It was a very popular carnival that was traveling the country, and everybody was so excited. So, when they arrived, they saw a very long line, and it seemed like they had to wait for many hours to be able to get in. But the ticket salesman left his booth and walked in front of the crowd. He said that he was going to give a riddle to everyone. Since this was the Carnival of Riddles, those who could answer correctly would be able to get inside earlier than others. The riddle was this. I am the beginning of eternity. I am the end of time and space. I am the start of every end. I am the end of every place. What am I? The answer is the letter E. Nancy and Mike were so happy that they knew the answer and didn't have to wait to get in. But even though they were able to move in front of the line, they still had to pay for the tickets. But they were so expensive. The salesman offered them another riddle. If they could answer it, he would give them a 50% discount. I have an X number of candy apples. If I count them by threes, the remainder is two. If I count them by fives, the remainder is three. If I count them by sevens, the remainder is two. How many candy apples do I have? Mike was kind of a genius, so he knew the answer immediately. Do you? The answer is 23. Nancy and Mike were glad to have been able to save some cash to buy snacks. Nancy wanted to get something sweet for herself and her brother, so they went to the candy booth. They had three options to choose from. They could either buy cotton candy, candy cane, or a candy apple. Which one should they pick? Take a closer look at the cotton candy. There is a teeny tiny spider stuck inside. Yikes! And did you notice that little apple worm inside the candy apple? That's never good. So, they should buy the candy cane. Before leaving the candy booth, Mike wanted to get a gumball too. However, when he inserted his coin into the gumball vending machine, he realized that something was strange. Hey! Do you see it too? Look inside the machine carefully. Not everything in there is a gumball. This and that are eggs. How weird is that? Hey! After eating their candy, they came upon a tent with a sign that said, Enter if you want to see real magic. They were intrigued, so they decided to walk in. There were three different magicians. The first was holding cards in his hands. Then he made them disappear. The second one also had cards, but he was making them levitate. And the third one put a pen through a card, but the card was unharmed after. Only one of them was capable of real magic, and the others were just doing tricks. Can you tell who? Take a closer look at the first magician's sleeves. You can see a corner of the card. He didn't make them disappear, he just hid them. The second magician's cards are attached to a clear thread. You can notice it from where the sunlight hits. So the third one is the real deal. Mike was a fan of all things scary, so he convinced his sister to take the haunted house ride. As their cart moved inside the dark tunnel, they encountered three different monsters along the way. A zombie, a ghost, and a mummy. 
Little did they know that one of them was a real monster. Can you tell which one? Take a look at the zombie. Its makeup is kind of melting, which means that it must be an actor. As for the mummy, look at his ankle. His skin slightly shows under all that mummy gauze. So he must be a dressed up actor as well. That makes the ghost the real monster. So creepy. Nancy didn't enjoy the haunted house ride. She wanted her next ride to be something relaxing. So she chose the carousel. Mike decided to skip this one to explore the carnival more. They agreed to meet later. When Nancy arrived at the carousel, she saw that all the horse seats were taken, except three. But only one of them looked safe to sit on. Which one is that? The second horse mount is cracked. It's not wise to pick that one. And the third horse is slowly moving back and forth even though the carousel is not rotating yet. Its screws must be loose or something. So, she should choose the first one. It's the cutest one anyway. As Nancy was enjoying the carousel, Mike decided to check out the Hall of Mirrors. The information board said that only one person was allowed inside. Mike entered and had so much fun enjoying all the funny reflections of himself on the weird mirrors. But then, suddenly, he screamed with fear. Why is that? Take a closer look at the mirror reflections. One of them doesn't belong to Mike. So, he is apparently not the only one inside, even though the sign said he would be. Mike was so scared of the unexpected reflection. He ran out of the Hall of Mirrors immediately. But as he did, he tripped on a stone and twisted his ankle. So, he decided to visit the first aid tent to get some ice. When he walked in, he saw that the nurse was in panic and in no condition to help him out because there were three pregnant women sitting in front of her, all claiming they were going to give birth now. However, Mike noticed that one of them was lying and faking her pregnancy. Can you tell who? Girl number three is clearly the liar. Take a look at the ultrasound picture in her hand. It has the first girl's name on it. She must have stolen it from her, so she's only pretending to be pregnant. Once the real pregnant ladies left for the hospital, Mike was able to get some ice for his ankle and went to meet his sister. At that moment, they heard an announcement coming from the stage. Ladies and gentlemen, gather up to see the strongest man alive. Don't believe me? I'm not lying. Here he comes. See him with your own eyes. Nancy and Mike wanted to see who this man was, so they joined the crowd. A muscular-looking man entered the stage. He said, I will prove to you how strong I am by breaking this thing with my bare hands. But first, you have to guess what it is. Here is my riddle to you. There was a greenhouse. Inside the greenhouse, there was a white house. Inside the white house, there was a red house. Inside the red house, there were lots of little ones. Nancy knew the answer, so she yelled it out. Can you guess? It's a watermelon, and the strong man was able to break it with his bare hands indeed. So cool! Nancy and Mike were tired, so they decided to call it a day and go home. But before that, they wanted to get a souvenir from the carnival. They picked a beautiful fridge magnet. When they paid for it, the gift shop salesman put three cups upside down on the table and placed their money under one of them. He said he would give their money back and the magnet for free if they could guess which cup had their money after he performed his trick. Watch carefully. Nancy knew where the money was immediately. How about you? It's here. You thought it was under this one, right? Watch it in slow motion again. Do you see the salesman putting the money under that one with a quick hand movement? Nancy noticed that. What a fun day. 
Paul is a photojournalist for a local newspaper. It's his day off, and he's hanging out at a party. Suddenly, a famous actress, Heather, enters the dance floor. Paul takes only one picture of her before his phone runs out of power. The next day, Paul shows this picture to his boss and gets a huge bonus. Can you guess why this picture is so exclusive? Heather is stealing money from this lady's pocket. Paul is looking at the office open space from the second floor. Suddenly, he spots a time traveler among his co-workers. Can you see this person too? This guy's outfit is too old-fashioned. Paul leaves his workplace to get some fresh air and eat. In a while, he returns and finds his boss unconscious on the floor. Oh. Paul calls doctors and questions three co-workers standing nearby. Rachel says, I entered his office 10 minutes ago to discuss my ideas, but he said he's been too busy and asked me to leave. Mm. Stan says, I don't know what happened here because it was my lunch break time. I was eating my hot dog outdoors. Mm. And Lily says, I think I saw some suspicious man in a black outfit entering his office. Hmm. Can you guess who's lying? Stan, he has an unpacked hot dog on his desk, so he was definitely doing something else during his lunch break. Paul arrives downtown to take some pictures. He's looking out the window of one of the buildings and sees this horrible scene. Why is he doing it? Do you have any ideas? This lady is a magician, so it's just a staging. Finally, Paul enters a spooky building where he's supposed to photograph. Suddenly, someone locks the door, and now Paul is trapped inside. He wanders around for a while and finds these four doors. A creepy voice announces, only door number five is the escape door. As for the other three doors, dangerous monsters are waiting behind them to eat anyone who dares to enter. Oh boy. Can you help Paul choose the right way? He should choose the first door. The symbols on the doors are actually numbers. Yeah. Paul enters the exam room and sees two more doors with spirals. Oh. The voice says, You should choose the spiral which consists of two separate parts. Hmm. The other door hides a magical portal leading to a black hole. Can you help Paul pick the right door? It's the second one. Paul opens the door and finds himself in a suspicious hall. He sees a metal door with a combination lock, but it's locked and requires a six-number code. What would you suggest? The correct code is 375419. There's a hint hanging on the wall. Paul should literally enter three sevens five fours, and one nine. Ooh. In the next room, Paul meets a mad scientist, the one who had imprisoned him. He says, I'm gonna set you free if you crack my last riddle. So listen carefully. I have a head and a tail that will never meet. Having too many of me is always a treat. What am I? The correct answer is a coin. The scientist says, Okay, you can go now. There are three doors for you to choose from. Unfortunately, each door is hiding some danger. There's a tank with a hungry shark behind the first door. And there's a bunch of balloons filled with toxic gas behind the second door. And there's a giant cobra waiting behind the third door. Can you help Paul choose the safest option to escape? Paul should choose the second door. Toxic gas is inside the balloons, so if he passes by carefully without popping them, he'll escape safely. Yeah. 
Paul returns to his neighborhood. He's walking down the street and sees a tree with a bunch of birds. Can you spot an antisocial owl among them? This owl is looking away from the rest of the group. There are two houses with two single women living next to Paul. One of them used to live in poverty all her life, but today she robbed a bank. Can you spot this woman? The first lady is the robber. She spent unnecessary money on food, which is far more than one person needs. Paul is having a family meeting. He asks two of his sisters to sell an equal amount of homemade cookies. The cost of each cookie is one dollar. Paul tells them, you shouldn't eat the cookies that you're selling, and you should sell all the cookies. At the end of the day, all cookies are sold, yet neither sister gained nor lost a dollar. How is this possible? The first sister bought a cookie from the other one, and the second sister bought a cookie from the first one, and so on. In the evening, Paul is having a family dinner, but one of the guests is an imposter. Oh. Can you guess who? This gentleman is a ghost. He's levitating in the air. The next day, Paul arrives at his workplace and sees his co-worker standing near this mirror. Lily says, It's rumored that anyone who stood up in front of that mirror at 4.44 ended up disappearing forever. The guys decide to debunk that myth. Lily approaches the mirror at 4.44, but nothing happens. They laugh at the rumor and get back to business. After work, everyone goes home, but Lily stays for a little longer to finish her work. After doing that, she walks up to the mirror and disappears. The clock says 7.16. Why did it happen at the wrong time? The rumor was about the mirror time. 7.16 is the mirror image of 4.44. Paul wants to rescue Lily, so he goes to the most famous wicked witch in his town. The witch says, Okay, young man, I can get your friend out of the looking glass if you help me in the kitchen. Which one of these seven potion pots will get full first? Do you have any ideas? Outlets to the first and fifth pots are blocked at the initial point, so they won't fill. Nothing is connected to the sixth pot. The outlet under the second pot is also blocked in the end. Outlets to pots 3, 4, and 7 are blocked in the middle, so they won't fill. Therefore, no pot will ever fill. The witch is satisfied with Paul's answer. She shows him four doors and says, Your friend is behind one of these doors. You only have one chance to pick the right one. Good luck! Can you help Paul find Lily? There are flower symbols on each door. Paul should pick the door with a lily. Yes! Paul rescues Lily, and the witch offers him to fulfill one wish. Paul goes home to ask advice from his family. His blind father wants to restore his sight. His sister wants a puppy, and his mother wants to be super rich. Paul makes a wish, and all three people get what they want. What was Paul's wish? Here's what Paul told the witch. My father wants to see our puppy digging in a pile of gold coins. Paul arrives at a luxury boat club to make a report. Four millionaires are talking about their boats. There are a total of eight boats, two in each color, red, green, blue, and yellow. Each millionaire owns two boats, but no millionaire has two boats of the same color. Alex doesn't have a yellow boat. Bob doesn't have a red boat but he does have a green one. One of the millionaires has a yellow boat and a blue boat. And another millionaire has a green boat and a blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat. David has a blue boat. 
but he doesn't have a green one. Can you guess the colors of boats owned by each millionaire? Alex has a red and a green boat. Bob has one green boat and one blue boat. Charles has a yellow boat and a red one. And David has one blue and one yellow boat. You walk through the streets. There's a warning on a post about lizard people charging at the inhabitants of the city. You remember investigating this case, but you couldn't find these reptiles. Now you need to go to the park. For several days, a large werewolf has been scaring the residents there. You know that the werewolf has a wife, and she is the only person who can calm the monster down and help him return to his human form. You have found three girls. Each of them might be the werewolf's wife that you're looking for. You ask his wife to approach him, but none of the girls admits she's the one you need. So you have to make your own choice. Do you see some wool on this girl's clothes? It's the wolf's fur, which means she's the wife. She walks up to the monster, hugs it, and the werewolf turns into a human. You're walking back to the car and hear some screams coming from the water. A woman is calling for help. You run into the river and swim toward the drowning woman. But when you approach her, you see three people. They're all screaming, but only one of them is a real human and needs help. The rest are mermaids who want to lure you to their kingdom. How can you find out who the real woman is? Just dive and check who has a fishtail. Emily has won the lottery, and now she can choose her prize. There are three options, a brand new Ferrari, a Gucci handbag, and Jimmy Choo shoes. Take a closer look at them and tell which prize she should choose. Emily should choose the handbag. The logos of Ferrari and Jimmy Choo are wrong, so the car and the shoes must be fake. So three best friends have finally met in a cafe to discuss some business. Val orders a big cake with fruit. Simon asks for a glass of soda. And Leo takes an energy bar out of his bag and starts eating it. The waiter brings the cake and the soda and leaves. Simon drinks from his glass, but Val doesn't touch the cake. Why? There are slices of tomatoes and cucumbers on it. Val asked for a fruitcake. An archaeologist makes his way through the dense jungle of an unknown island. He's looking for a valuable treasure, a 2,000-year-old ancient cup. If he manages to get it, he can sell the artifact for millions of dollars. He comes out to a small lake with a waterfall. He dives under the water and notices two caves. The cup is inside one of them. Where should the archaeologist go? Think faster, he's running out of air. He needs to swim to the left cave. Air bubbles are floating out, which means there is some dry land inside the cave. Three guys are sitting on the sidewalk. They're all in dirty clothes and look tired. Each of them hopes to get some money from people who are passing by. But nobody helps them, since one of these homeless people only pretends to be poor. Passersby see this and don't want to help any of them. Who do you think is pretending? Look at this bald guy. You can notice a smartwatch on his wrist. Samantha has been wandering through the desert for several hours. The sand is so hot that she can't touch it. Samantha notices a tent far ahead. It's definitely not a mirage. The girl quickens her pace and reaches the spot. She finds a bottle of water, two eggs, and a frying pan inside. Samantha quenches her thirst. 
Now she feels hungry. But it's dangerous to eat raw eggs in the desert. You can get food poisoning. Samantha decides to fry the eggs. She wanders around, trying to find some firewood, but sees nothing but endless dunes. How can Samantha cook the eggs? She can put the pan on the sand. It's hot. The sun will add to this heat, and the eggs will fry. After taking a shower, Albert realizes he's lost his wedding ring. It seems that the ring fell down the drain. Oh no, his wife will return home soon, and she'll definitely notice this disappearance. The wife enters the apartment. She looks at her husband, asks him to turn around, and pulls the ring out of his hair. It got caught there while he was in the shower. But how did the wife know the ring was there? Albert was facing her. There's a mirror behind Albert. The wife noticed the ring in the reflection. Two powerful film producers are having breakfast in an expensive restaurant. They discuss the budget for a sequel to a very successful movie that got $500 million at the box office. They speak very quietly, since they mention important details of the script. They suspect that someone might overhear them. The producers are right. Some curious people are indeed eavesdropping on their conversation. Can you find them? There's a guy at the next table holding a magazine upside down. Obviously, he isn't reading it. He must be listening to the producers. That girl over there is a journalist. There's a camera lens sticking out of her backpack. See? She will post a video, and fans will be able to read the producer's lips. That man is eating a salad. But you can notice a microphone hidden in his long hair. Three people are standing in line in front of an ice cream cart. The first guy is taking a cone from the cellar. The guy behind him is nervous. His hands are in his pockets. The third guy is looking at something through binoculars. Which of them is a police officer? Look at the first guy. He's got a police radio in his pocket. Where's my money? The owner of the diner screams. It's 30 minutes till the end of the working day, but there's no money in the cash register. Three employees have been working today, but they swear they haven't touched the money. They say there have been no customers in the diner. The boss doesn't believe them. He studies the employees, trying to figure out who's the thief. Linda is wearing a pair of sunglasses, jeans, and a stylish t-shirt. She also has an expensive phone. Michael is dressed in costly designer clothes. Sarah is wearing a regular jacket and a long skirt. Who do you think has stolen the money? They're all telling the truth. Look at the sign on the door. Open, it says. This means people passing by the diner see the closed sign. The employees simply forgot to turn it over, and that's why there have been no customers. Starry sky, fresh cool air, endless dunes, a small campfire, and a tent. This place is a fairy tale. Sarah has always wanted to spend a night in a desert. She takes pictures of the stars, drinks hot tea from a thermos, and enjoys life. It's a perfect night. Too perfect. The smile disappears from Sarah's face. Everything is not real. Two signs indicate that Sarah is sleeping now. What are these signs? Two moons are shining in the sky. A sea crab is looking at Sarah from the sand. But it's scorpions that usually live in deserts, not sea crabs. Mary opens her eyes and realizes that she's in an unknown place. There's a lot of trash in the room. A red lamp is flashing from the ceiling. Something must have happened here. Mary can leave through the door. It's open. But wait, 
She needs to take some useful stuff from the room. But what? She can only choose two items. Which ones? Mary needs to get scuba gear and a mask. Look at that small window. Fish are swimming by. Mary is underwater. The Millers and the Johnsons are going on a vacation. Can you tell which family has a daughter? Take a closer look at their suitcases. The Millers have two suitcases, but the Johnsons have three. The extra one must be their daughters, who probably just left for a while. Let's move to Norway. After the Christmas break, two twin sisters, Alicia and Ada, came to visit their mother. However, one of the sisters has a boyfriend from Thailand, who she had visited right before her mother. Can you tell which one? Norway is a cold country in the north. Also, it's winter, but unlike her twin sister, Ada is tanned. It's probably because she just spent her vacation in some warm country, like Thailand, at her boyfriend's place. So it must be her. Jessica, Pam, and Serge have just met in the hall of a business conference. Take a closer look at their hands. Can you guess which one of them is a millionaire? Serge is wearing a Versace watch, but it's probably a fake because the word Versace is written with an extra letter. Pam is wearing plenty of jewelry, but if you take a closer look, you'll see scratches. It's gilded jewelry. And Jessica is wearing only one silver Tiffany bracelet, and she's the most suitable candidate to be the millionaire. Rick found a huge yellow diamond on the floor of a fancy boutique. Three women came over to claim it. Daisy showed her earrings with yellow diamonds and said the ring was a part of her jewelry set. Glenda said it was her engagement ring. Jill said the ring belonged to her grandmother. Help Rick to find out who's lying. Daisy's earrings are framed in rose gold, while the ring in white gold. It's not a jewelry set. Glenda is already wearing an engagement ring on her finger. So, Rick should give the ring back to its true owner, Jill. Kim is a manager in a luxury restaurant. She came back from a break and saw a quarrel between the waiter whose name was Tom and a customer, Nancy. Nancy had claimed that she had ordered a combo lunch meal, but Tom said that she didn't order any food but a croissant. Kim knew exactly who was lying. How did she guess? Take a look at the announcement. Combo meals are served between 1 and 4 p.m. And the clock shows 6 p.m. Nancy just couldn't have ordered the lunch because it was too late. Look at the picture. Find the missing piece. This cube on the right fits perfectly, but you gotta rotate it first. Bus station guard Stephen received an anonymous call. One eccentric rich guy decided to prank his friends heading to a mountain resort. He hired a criminal to hijack the bus along with all the passengers and go on a beach party instead. Once Stephen heard this message, he ran into the parking lot and saw five people near the bus heading to the mountains. Help Stephen to determine which of the passengers is the possible criminal. Look at the guy on the right. He's not dressed for skiing. He's wearing beach clothes. Freddy was hired to decorate a fancy boutique. He was taking pictures when he heard screams. Freddy saw two women fighting and pulling an expensive handbag. Both women, Rose and Lily, said they've put the bag on the register stand to buy it later. But Freddy knew who was lying. How?
Take a look at the picture. Lily's right arm is in a cast, and the bag is standing right behind her broken arm. If it was Lily's bag, she would probably put it on the left side using her healthy arm. Therefore, the bag belongs to Rose. Look at the picture carefully and choose an image identical to this example. Well done! Image 4 is identical, but it's rotated by 180 degrees. Detective got a call from the villa of a famous billionaire, Mr. Green, who disappeared this morning after he left home to play golf with his coach. Detective questioned all the witnesses. The housemaid said Mr. Green had breakfast and left at 10 a.m. Mr. Green's girlfriend said she left for a photo shoot early in the morning before he woke up. Mr. Green's personal golf coach said he had spent all day at home. The detective realized that one of the witnesses was lying. Who? The coach was lying. He had an appointment with a client. Anna was visiting her granny in the country. Granny decided to cook a special dinner and sent Anna to the forest to collect some mushrooms. Granny gave Anna a picture of specific mushrooms that she had to pick. This was very important because the forest was full of dangerous mushrooms. Help Anna to choose the right mushrooms. Well done! Mushrooms number 3 are perfectly safe. George and Henry met a gorgeous singer, Tara. Both men fell in love at first sight and invited her on a yacht. When all three arrived at the pier, each guy began to claim that he was a millionaire and owner of the yacht. Help Tara to find out which one is a liar. Look closely at the yacht. There is a plaid jacket that matches Henry's pants perfectly. At the same time, the watch at George's hand is cracked and shows 8 a.m., although it's evening time. It's unlikely that a millionaire would wear a broken watch. Mike and Wendy expected the newborn to arrive next week. Mike was painting walls but accidentally pulled his back, fell, and passed out. He woke up in the hospital. Three women were standing in front of his bed. Each claimed that she had been Mike's wife. Help Mike to remember his real wife. The belly of the first woman is too small for a woman who is giving birth next week. The second woman is wearing high heels and her shoes are buttoned. The third woman's sandals are unbuttoned. She couldn't button her shoes on her own because of her belly. Look at the picture attentively. Find the odd kitten. That's right, the second kitten's paw is different from all the others. Tina had five sisters. One night, she woke up in the middle of the night because she heard a loud noise from her sister's bedroom, as if someone had slammed the window. Tina suspected that one of her sisters left a bed after lights out and hurried to check them. Tina inspected all five beds. Each sister seemed to be sleeping peacefully. Help Tina to determine which sister went for a walk after lights out and made so much noise. It was this sister in the third bed. Take a closer look. She crawled under the blanket wearing her dirty sneakers. Diana, her fiancé Tim, sister Sarah, and their puppy came to visit the groom's mother, Miss Wilson, at her house. Next morning, Diana found out that her puppy was gone. Diana questioned oh no. all three family members. Tim was hanging out with his ex-classmates. Sarah demonstrated a small kitty. She spent her time purchasing a new pet. And Miss Wilson tried to stay away from the puppy because of her severe allergy. Who is a liar? Miss Wilson lied about her allergy. She wouldn't have been able to stand next to the kitten. Betty had three daughters. 
One morning, her neighbor Lauren said she had seen one of Betty's daughters at a nightclub last night, but she wasn't sure which one exactly. Betty didn't allow her daughters to visit nightclubs, so she questioned all of them. Sam spent all night in a library. Gemma on a date with her boyfriend, Alex, but she returned home before midnight. Kelly said she was watching a series all night and didn't leave the house. Who is lying? Sam is lying. Look at her face and clothes. She's covered with glitter. Who needs glitter in a library? An elephant was sleeping and having a very weird dream. When he woke up the next morning, he found out that his shadow was gone. He was looking for his shadow all day and finally met a wizard. The wizard confessed that he had stolen the elephant's shadow, but the wizard was ready to give it back if the elephant managed to recognize it. Help the elephant to make the right choice. Yep, the second shadow fits perfectly. Kelly received an anonymous message that one of her teachers is a vampire. Look at the picture. Can you help Kelly to identify the real vampire? It's over here. She has an eye in her meal. Jane called the police to report that someone had broken into her house and taken her precious jewelry collection. She was washing her hair in the shower when she heard footsteps downstairs. She went down and found out that the safe was opened and all the jewelry was gone. When the detective heard this story, he arrested Jane immediately. Why? Jane couldn't hear footsteps while washing her hair in the shower. Look at the picture attentively. Find an odd bee. That's right, this bee has fewer stripes than the others. Jack and Sarah went to the countryside to celebrate their anniversary. At the local market, they bought a sweet watermelon. They sat on a beach, cut it up, and enjoyed it. The watermelon tasted sweet and delicious. Each of them ate three wedges, but in 20 minutes, Sarah got sick. Jack took her to the hospital. The doctor said the watermelon was poisoned. Sarah and Jack ate the same food and drank the same drinks. How is this possible that Jack feels well? The poison was in the seeds. Sarah ate them and Jack threw them away. Look at the picture attentively. Can you identify a dog among all these pandas? This little body is definitely not a panda. <laughs> 